guys, this is Mrs. Gessler, and in this video we're going to talk about Newton's first law. As part of lesson one, you're going to learn about Newton's first law and inertia and how those things are related, and we're also going to talk about what Newton's first law means about the motion of an object. Um, and so let's start by uh, explaining what Newton's first law states. So under this blue box right here, we've got an object at rest remains at rest, and an object in motion maintains its constant velocity unless it experiences an outside unbalanced force. That's what Newton's first law says. Now that's a lot of words, and you might have heard it a little bit differently, especially in middle school, and that's okay. They all mean the same thing, and so let's talk about what it means. So let's first start with why does this happen? Well, the reason it happens is because objects have inertia. Now, inertia is the tendency of an object to resist a change in motion. It's kind of like a character trait, which is like stubbornness for people. Some objects are more stubborn than others, just like some people are more stubborn than others, and that means they don't want to change, and they don't want to change their motion. Now, we learned about changing motion already. That's when objects speed up or slow down or turn. Now, objects will change, but only if they are forced to do it, okay? That's what we need to know about objects uh, and the first law there. So, why does it have to be an unbalanced force? Well, it's because when objects are in equilibrium, nothing's going to change. So let's talk about what equilibrium is. Now, when we mean an outside force, that means something else other than the object or something that's part of the object has to do the changing of, the, of what it's happening or, or what it's doing. So it has to be an outside force or you have to be interacting with another object. So you might change your own motion, but you have to do it by interacting with something else like the floor or the wall, okay? Um, it has to be an unbalanced force because if the net force is zero, it's like nothing is happening. If the net force is zero, it's like there's no force, right? So we call that equilibrium. When the net force is zero, when there's balanced forces, there's no change, we call that equilibrium. That's just the word that we use to describe that, okay? Now, when we have, uh, when we, when we have equilibrium, why does it have to be a constant velocity or at rest? Well, that's because what we're dealing with is no acceleration, okay? No acceleration, uh, when we're talking about the objects that are, that are changing, that force causes acceleration. Now, acceleration is when objects speed up or slow down or turn. That doesn't say anything about what they were doing to begin with, only that they can't be changing. So they could be moving, they just can't be changing. So let's connect that to the equilibrium. So there's two kinds of equilibrium, static and dynamic equilibrium. Static equilibrium is what we call it when they're not moving. Static, like stationary, means they're not moving. So when an object is not moving and the net force is zero, that means that the, ob the object will stay at rest. Now dynamic, that's for something that is moving. If it's dynamic, it's lively, right? So it's got a lot of motion going on. So when the object is moving and the net force is zero for dynamic equilibrium, that means the object is going to stay moving at a constant velocity. So what else can I do with this information? Well, it goes both ways, right? So um, if you've got an object that is at rest, then you know the net force has to be zero. And if you have an object that is changing, uh, is moving with a constant velocity, you also know that the net force must be zero. And you also know that if it's changing, if it's speeding up or slowing down or turning, then the net force has to not be zero, right? because it goes both ways. It goes both ways and all the other directions too. All right, now, if you have any questions, make sure you ask your teacher uh, for help. And if you need um, anything else, there's some practice that you're gonna be doing. Uh, thanks for watching.